Hey everybody, Red here. Pokemon Black with only one Lucario was fast and easy, so I have a little bit of extra time this week. Let's do something new. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Brilliant Diamond with no new moves. First, yeah, this is my first Gen 8 run. It's a remake of Gen 4, but it's still got all of the moves from Gen 5 through 8, so there should be a lot of new stuff in this. My rules for the no new moves runs are that we can only use the moves a Pokemon starts with when we catch them. That means that even the first few moves that they learn when they have empty move slots won't count. So the early game is extra hard. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. With the modern day move variety, I think I'll be able to win this, but considering that I've hardly played Brilliant Diamond, I'm not really sure what to expect. Let's explain the rules. I'm not allowed to use any moves that my Pokemon didn't have when I caught it. If it has empty move slots, then I can't stop it from learning new moves as it levels, but we won't be allowed to use any of those new moves. Normally, I'd say I can learn HMs to progress on the map, but I don't actually think that's a thing anymore in the new games. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. No need for the Pokemon randomizer on this one, we're actually playing on the Switch, so let's get started. Right away we pick Piplup, not that it really matters so much since our starting moves are going to be pretty much useless anyway. I just needed to pick a starter so that we can catch a few other things. Right away we head a few routes north and pick up a Badoo. It's got Absorb, Growth, Stun Spore, and Worry Seed. Man, that's way better than in Platinum. See, this is why I'm pumped for this run. Pokemon have so many new moves in the new games. We can probably make a pretty cool team. On our way east to Orberg is our first rival fight. It started with my Piplup against his Starly. We weren't allowed to use our water gun since we didn't start with it, so I just hit Pound a few times. It wasn't doing much though, so I decided to switch to Badoo to paralyze him, just for him to end up poisoning himself off our poison point instead. That's perfectly fine, I just used that time to use Growth and Absorb till he went down. His other Pokemon was his Turtwig, and I didn't have a great answer for it. I tried to use Stun Spore, but of course the Powder and Spore moves don't work against Grass types, so I just had to start using Absorb. That's when things backfired and he started spamming Withdraw for defense. Eventually I just kept buffing and spamming Absorb, but naturally we went down as soon as he used his final tackle. I lucked out though, and he got poisoned off our Poison Point ability. Knowing that we stood a chance now, I had Piplup keep spamming Growl so that we could hold on longer, and I switched to Pound when we couldn't lower his attack anymore. It was close, but we actually won! That was a weirdly intense first rival fight. So while I travel a bit, let's talk a little bit about this run. I actually don't know much about Diamond and Pearl because they came out when I was in high school and you can probably believe it, I was busy at the time. I didn't actually end up beating Gen 4 games until Platinum, so I've never actually played Diamond and Pearl. I know there's a few differences, like the Ghost Gym is the fifth gym instead of the third, and I think some of the paths you take are different, so some of this is going to be pretty new to me. If you want to see my first time playing Gen 4, by the way, the entire thing is in a Let's Play on this channel. It's called Pokemon Platinum A Journey, and is going to be linked in the description of this video. That playlist spans multiple years, so enjoy hearing me and my friends slowly get older as we play Pokemon Platinum. It was a wild ride. And I think the vast majority of that playthrough, if not the whole thing, was from, like, before I blew up on Pokemon stuff. So you get to hear what the channel was like before I ever did any of these Pokemon challenges. Well, I guess Pokemon challenges in this fashion. If you really want to get semantic about it, like 11 years ago I was doing monotype runs on early YouTube. I guess you could argue I've been doing Pokemon challenges for over a decade now. Alright, so north of Orberg is a patch of grass where I hunt for a Machop. They have Low Kick, Leer, and Focus Energy. Not the best moves, but Low Kick should be good for taking down rock types. Plus, ours has extra attack, so that's pretty sweet. I'll clear out the mine, then hit up the rock chip. Let's see if Badoo and Machop can do the job. So first up is Geodude, who nearly went down in one hit to absorb. We took him out on the follow-up, but he did use Stealth Rock, so switching Pokemon hurts us now. Second is Onyx, who was fast enough to hit Rock Throw, but we actually healed so much off Absorb that we almost got all of our health back, 
so by the time that he went down, we were still in decent shape. Last is Kranidos, who headbutt us down to one health on the first shot, but managed to get himself poisoned in the process. Well, I was going to paralyze him, so I guess that's not happening. Once we fainted, I sent in Piplup. He can't really do any damage, but I was able to growl at him a little bit to buy us some time for Poison to deal more damage. He went down fast, and last was our Machop. Kranidos had about half his health by this point, so as soon as Machop hit low kick, we got the win. With that battle won, we can finally make some progress. Right away we get to the north end of the route above Jubilee Life City to catch a Starly. It's not a high enough level to have wing attack, but at least it's part flying so it can resist things in the upcoming grass gym. We have the Valley Windworks next, and I almost wrote it down as the Weather Institute. Force of habit. I remember fainting here quite a bit in our Platinum runs. Maybe it'll go fine? Here's the battle with Commander Mars. First, she sends out Zubat, and we had Machop at the front of the party, so I switched to Badoo and used Stun Spore. She confused us on the first turn, well we missed our Stun Spore. I tried for it again, but it turns out that she was using U-Turn though, so we took a hit and she switched to Perugly. We didn't get to paralyze her, but she did get herself poisoned pretty quickly while taking us down. Out to Machop, and it took a little while, but our low kicks were able to chip away at her until she went down. Last was her Zubat again, so I sent Starly out to spam Quick Attack since it's the best move that it started with. It was enough to get the win. Right after, we head north up to the Eterna Forest. The forest itself is awesome for leveling up, by the way, since it's all double battles with a trainer that heals you after every fight. As soon as I get past this forest, I won't be able to do this anymore, so I take the chance to try to get to a decent level. Starly even evolved in the process, so that was pretty cool. Still can't use any flying moves, though. I wish I could catch a version-exclusive Murkrow right now to get Peck, but they're only here at night, so I'll have to come back later if I want one, and I'm not really sure that I'm gonna need one later. As soon as we get to Eterna City, I head east. Cynthia shows up to give us cut, but that's not what we're here for. There's a little route here that we can catch a Ponyta on. In Platinum, you could catch one earlier, but in Brilliant Diamond, we had to wait till this one. Not that it's a big deal, though. We didn't need it earlier. Anyway, it's got Flame Wheel, so this should be awesome in the Grass Gym. Speaking of, first up at the Grass Gym is Cherubi. Our Ponyta's Ember was doing decent damage, but it still took quite a few hits thanks to all of Gardenia's healing items. Still, we hardly lost any health in the process. Second is Turtwig, and he put up Reflect early, then did a bit of damage with Razor Leaf before going down as well. Last was Roserade, who instantly took us down in one hit, so we switched out to Staravia. Quick Attack wasn't doing much at first, but then Reflect wore off and we started doing a little bit more. Thanks to a crit, we were able to get her down to low health, but we just got taken out. We ended up throwing the entire rest of our team at her, and although we got really, really close to fainting her, we lost the fight. Okay, next try with a few more levels. This one went basically the same way until Roserade. I sent out Badoo instead to use Worry Seed, changing her ability to Insomnia. Then I just wasted time until Reflect wore off and we fainted. Now we don't need to worry about Reflect and her ability. Second, I sent out Ponyta. I have her holding an Orin Berry for health this time. And it pays off right away as we hang on from Grass Knot, heal a bit of health, then get to work with Ember. We lucked out and she missed her Stun Spore, giving us more turns to deal damage. We still went down pretty early though. Next is Staravia. I'd love to use our Wing Attack, but that's against the rules, so Quick Attack is our best move. We got paralyzed early, but Quick Attack still has priority, so we still go first. I was getting worried because we were fully paralyzed for a round, but we ended up taking her down after a few Quick Attacks. So next up is the local Galaxy Hideout. We need to beat this place so that we can get a bike, and we can't actually leave town without one since Cycling Road is next. There's some Pokemon over there that we might actually keep for most of the run, so I kinda wanna get there early. At the end of the hideout is Commander Jupiter. First is their Zubat, so we start with Staravia. Zubat is actually immune to our Intimidate, but it doesn't really matter, we make short work of her. For Skuntank, we switch to Badoo to land a Stun Spore. She actually has Flamethrower for some reason, and that takes us out quick, but we did get to Paralyze her first. Back out to Staravia, and Intimidate lowers her attack, although we do get poisoned by Poison Gas at the same time. Quick Attack wasn't doing much, and we didn't last long, but some Paralysis Luck did buy us some time. Machop was able to tag in and easily finish it with Low Kick. Now that we have access to some better Pokemon, I catch myself a new Ponyta that has Flame Charge, a solid upgrade from just using Ember. It's a lower level for now, but it only has a 4 level difference, and this one has a better nature. Runaway isn't that great an ability, but I'll take it. 
I also pick up a Bronzor while I'm here. It's really tanky, but its attacks are super weak. Plus, ours has bonus defense and even less attacks, so I'm not expecting to do any damage with this thing until it evolves. So it's not great yet, but I think it's going to help a lot in the Ghost Gym later in the game, so let's catch it early. Once it evolves, it's a perfectly usable Pokémon. I'm getting to a part of the run where some of the trainer battles are getting really hard to deal with just because we don't really have type variety. I'm pretty much forced to just use Staravia with Quick Attack against most trainers as a generic reliable party lead. We're getting ever closer to the point where we can get some actually good moves on leveled up Pokemon and I can't wait. The only thing between us and them is this hilarious looking bobblehead of Cyrus. I don't know what's better, him or the smile that's plastered on our face the whole time. Time to catch more already. Just west of Heart Home City, we grab a level 18 Psyduck. It's important that it's level 18 because that means it starts with Zen Headbutt. It doesn't have the same type attack bonus because for some reason Psyduck and Golduck are not also Psychic type. I just keep thinking that they are, but it's something. We also pick up a Machop with better moves. This one has Low Sweep and Revenge, two really solid moves. Low Sweep does damage and lowers accuracy, and Revenge lets the opponent attack first, but if we take damage on that round, then our Revenge will do double damage. One day, this Machop is gonna be a beastly Machamp, and I think he's gonna be our team lead. So I was walking around town when I got ambushed by my rival. Problem is, our new Machop is at the front of the party, so right away I have to switch to Staravia to deal with his Starly. Ours won, obviously. Next is his Beweasel, so I switch to Machop, figuring that Badoo is probably just too weak at this point. Revenge nearly landed us a one-shot, and the Shell Bell that I picked up in Heart Home got us some decent health back. On the follow-up, we knocked him out. Next was his Grottle, so I tried keeping Machop in, but he just went down in one hit, so it's out to Bronzer to hit Confuse Ray. He started using Curse to lower his speed but raise his attack and defense, and I quickly realized that all of Bronzer's attacks do basically nothing. So I reconfused him and kept using Confusion until he made us faint. We actually chipped him down quite a bit before we fainted. Ponyta was able to take him down to a sliver with Ember, but then got taken out in one Razor Leaf, so Staravia had to finish him off with Quick Attack. Last was his Ponyta, so I sent in Prinplup to spam Pound. We probably should have lost the exchange, but he spent a bunch of time using Tail Whip, and we landed a crit, so that was easy. Right, so with that fight out of the way, I can finally get back to fighting trainers and traveling. I kind of thought that we'd head south from Heart Home, but I guess we still have to go east in Diamond. Again, I've never actually played Diamond, just Platinum, so I'm not totally sure how different things are. Plus, this is a remake, so I'm sure some of those things are going to be different from the original Diamond as well. Anyway, the trainers here aren't too bad now that we have a little bit of move variety, but a lot of our team is still pretty low leveled considering we just replaced a few with wild Pokemon that we only got a few battles ago. I'm gonna try and grind up what we have a little bit, then get ready for the next gym. Next up is Veilstone, so let's do the fighting gym. First is our Staravia against her Metatype. We started with Quick Attack as she tried to build up her bulk up. Didn't matter though, she never landed a damaging move, just Flash. For Machoke, we switched to Psyduck to see if Zen Headbutt would do anything. It did a decent little chunk of damage, but Machoke really quickly took us out. So I sent Staravia back in for the attack drop from Intimidate. Things went well, but then we took massive damage off Rock Tomb, and she used a Hyper Potion to full heal when we were just about to get the knockout. Bronzer lucked out and hit a critical confusion the moment he tagged in, but then she Hyper Potioned again, so once again we went down before we could make Machoke faint. I thought we were doomed, but as Machop came in, Machoke hit himself in confusion and we hit revenge for great damage. Then Machoke hit knockoff to make us drop our fist plate, but it powered up our second revenge for a knockout. Last was Lucario and he started with bulk up, so I just had Badoo use stun spore right away before going down. It was pretty clear we were doomed though when Ponyta's flame charge did just about nothing and we got one shot in return. All we had left was Machop, who hit for decent damage, but we still went down. Well, that was after a whole grind, so it sucks to get stuck like that, but we do actually have access to the next area. We can catch some stuff ahead of time, so we can save time on grinding them later. I don't really know how many of them we're going to use right now, but they're at least worth catching. I have to get there first, though. 
While we walk, I'm gonna try and do a Chimera sponsorship that's actually within the allotted time again. In the last ad, I let you know that Chimera just got some new stock in their store. Well, they went ahead and sent me some of the new stuff, so enjoy even more of my terrible pictures. Again, I am not a camera pilot. We've got these new sweatpants that have already become my new pajamas because they're so comfy. My personal favorite part of the sweatpants is that I can fit my entire Switch in the pocket. Super useful when I'm, uh, I don't know, grinding in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond for days on end. A couple of nice jackets. These are actually part of a winter collection, so the one you see on the right is really good in the autumn, and the one you see on the left is super warm for winter. There's also this really crisp, nice white hoodie, and another awesome graphic tee with a space theme. I really love how the blues on this shirt look. Reminds me of the other space shirt that you guys liked so much in the previous videos. That and cobalt is my favorite color, so I'm just a really big fan of blues on black in general. Looks really nice. Like always, you can use the discount code MADRYBREAD at checkout if you'd like. It lets the people at Chimera know that you came from one of my videos. Thanks again to Chimera for sponsoring the video because, damn, I can already tell this is gonna be a real long one. Let's get back to catching some Pokemon. First, we get a Staravia. The one that we've had since the start is surprisingly useful, so we're catching a new one here so that it has better moves. This one has Endeavor, Quick Attack, Wing Attack, and Double Team. Nice to finally have a flying move! This Staravia is a solid 9 levels lower than ours though, so we'll have to train it up. Then I catch Graveler, not usually my first choice for a Pokemon, but it's got some decent rock moves, so that helps. Not totally sure if we're gonna use it, but it's got extra attack on its nature. Maybe it'll be good against Cyrus? I also catch Giraffarig. I'm not sure if I'll need this for the Ghost Gym or not, but it being part normal type means that their Ghost moves can't hit us, so it'll probably be a good idea to catch one while I'm here. Don't know if I have time to train it, to be honest. And on our way through the next area, our Machop finally ended up evolving. I feel so much better about the Fighting Gym knowing that Machop could probably deal decent damage against Lucario. Still not sure if Ponyta can carry his own weight though. We still aren't done though. Just west of Pastoria City, the city with the water gym, is a big gross swamp where I catch a level 20 Rosalia. This way it's got Toxic Spikes, a pretty awesome move. We've also got Mega Drain and Magical Leaf and Leech Seed. I think this one's a keeper. Now that we have a few new Pokemon, let's go do the fighting gym again. Meditite went down super easy this time, thanks to our new Staravia having wing attack, and for Machoke, we sent in Psyduck to deal some decent damage with Zen Headbutts. We still went down, but it was much easier to take him down on the follow-up with Staravia's wing attack. Last was Lucario, so I just had our own Machoke tank drain punch, then one-shot him with revenge. That went great! And right after that, we can try the water gym. Right away, I have Bronzer Confused Water Onyx. I thought we'd go down super early from Crunch, but we actually lucked out with Confusion and did quite a bit of damage before we fainted. It was enough that Machoke was able to finish it with Revenge. Quagsire is next, so naturally we nearly one-shot it with Mega Drain on Rosalia. Probably should have just one-shot it with Magic Leaf though, since we took some damage. The follow-up finished it off, and next was Floatzel, so I sent him Machoke knowing that he could handle Ice Fang. We tanked Brine, and Revenge actually ended up being a one-shot, so that's another gym leader down. So, right outside is a Team Galactic grunt trying to plant a bomb. That sounds pretty serious, but Pokemon battles are serious too, so let's do a rival fight. It starts with our Staravia beating up his Starly, again, I don't really know why he hasn't evolved his. Out to Rosalia to deal with Boweasel, and we just one-shot him with Mega Drain. His Ponyta went down in two water pulses from our Psyduck, and last was his Grottle, so we sent in Staravia with Wing Attack. We did a lot of damage to each other, but we had the speed advantage, so we got the win in the end. So this next bit of travel through a foggy route is normally a total pain in these runs. I don't bring it up very much because it's not terribly interesting to watch, but the fog lowers your accuracy if you don't have the HMD fog that displaces it. In this game, we just have to have the HM in our inventory to use it, so it's not that bad. That lets us fight more trainers here, and man do we ever need it. We have the Ghost Gym coming up, and I don't think I'm ready. First is our Bronzer versus her Drift Bloom. That still doesn't look right. It looks like a typo. 
It went pretty horrible though. Uh, he just kept using Strength Sap to stay healthy and Will-O-Wisp and Hex to one-shot us. I sent him Machoke next to use Knockoff, and the damage was pretty good. We even hit him while he was in mid-air thanks to our ability No Guard. I had to switch to Ponyta to let him tank the fly at the end, and I thought that I'd get the knockout, but then they used a Hyper Potion. In the end, Ponyta went down and we had to switch back out to Machoke. I thought Knockoff would get us the win, but no, Strength Sap healed her by a ton and weakened our moves even more, so we took tons of damage before getting the knockout. That's when it got much worse though, as Gengar came out and totally destroyed the whole team with Sludge Bomb. I didn't know she had that. Uh, this might be rough. I came back after getting a couple levels to evolve Bronzong. We can deal tons more damage this time, but we still just get one shot by Hex. Machoke was able to knock out Drift Bloom much earlier this time though. Even with higher levels and most of our team alive though, we still got totally destroyed by Gengar. Turns out it's got Dazzling Gleam as well, so our fighting types aren't safe either. I figured this would happen eventually, but we need to have a proper grind again. I'm still used to the Platinum Ghost Gym where it's earlier in the game so her team is weaker. My biggest concern was just doing enough damage with Dark Moves, but it looks like Gengar sweeping us with Sludge Bomb is what I should have really been worried about. Bronzong would be immune to that, but he doesn't make it that far into the fight because I need him against Drift Bloom. He can't heal much off his Strength Sap if he's sapping Bronzong after all. I'm hoping that with a few more levels Machoke could take out Drift Bloom instead, but I'm still really worried about Strength Sap. That's gonna heal him by a lot if I'm using Machoke. If I could make it work though, then Bronzong could deal with Gengar, then we just have to hope we can take out Miss Magius at the end. Alright, it's time for Drift Bloom again. This time we just start with Machoke and use Knockoff over and over until we got the knockout. She hit a bunch of strength saps to stay healthy and to weaken us, and we lost a lot of health to Aftermath, but we got the knockout without losing Bronzong, letting us send him in against Gengar. Thanks to being part Steel type, she can't just spam Sludge Bomb. I thought we'd still go down after Shadow Claw crit, but we ended up surviving long enough that we actually got a knockout. Last is her Miss Magius, so I played it safe and just had Rosalia go for Leech Seed right away. We got confused off Confuse Ray, but her fate was sealed. We just kept hitting Mega Drain and let the health from that and Leech Seed keep us strong. It took forever thanks to all of her healing items, but eventually she got herself poisoned on our poison point so she fainted even faster. We can finally make some progress. Now that we've beaten the Ghost Gym, we're allowed to use Surf outside of battle. Right away I go to the Fuego Ironworks to catch a Pachirisu. It's got Sweet Kiss, Electro Ball, Swift, and Nuzzle. Electro Ball could actually be really strong because its damage is based on the speed difference between you and your opponent, being faster obviously making it stronger. Also, being able to reliably paralyze with Nuzzle is fantastic. That probably has some utility for me. I'm not sure that I'll need Sweet Kiss and Swift, but stacking Confusion and Paralysis can be good. Let's give it a try on the upcoming rifle fight. So he's finally evolved his Starly into Staravia, but we have Pachirisu now, so we just nuzzled it to paralyze it, then used Electro Ball a couple times for the knockout. For Heracross, I sent in Ponyta and just went for Flame Charge. All he did in return was Leer, so two shots got the knockout. For Boweasel, we just had Rosalia one-shot it, and his Ponyta was easy work for Gold Duck. Last was his Garotl, so we just took him out with our own Ponyta. He still doesn't seem to have any ground moves he can use on us, so we took him down in three hits. Now, right after this is the Steel Gym, and I don't think it'll be too hard, but first we go to Iron Island. You don't have to do this dungeon, but it's pretty short, and near the end is a shiny stone. I use it to evolve Rosalia into Rose Raid, since I think we'll be keeping it the entire rest of the game. Let's go try the Steel Gym. First he sends out Bronzer, and we lucked out, critting a flame charge to really mess him up. He used Sandstorm, but he fainted right after. For Steelix, I sent in our new Roserade. I used Mega Drain thinking we'd be slower, but we actually ended up being faster, so we could have just used Magic Leaf for more damage. He only took two Earthquakes to take us down, but we left him hurt enough that Machoke was able to easily finish it. Last was Bastiodon, who we were just about to one-shot, but he held on thanks to an ability. Low Sweep was easily able to finish it though, so we had an easy first try. Alright, it's another travel-heavy part of the game. We've got to go around the world chasing down Team Galactic members. We've got a few commanders coming up, then the Ice Gym, followed by the Team Galactic base. I assume that there's going to be a Cyrus fight in there, but then again, there wasn't one in the city where you get Surf, so maybe that's just a Platinum thing? 
I don't think anything here is really going to give us too much trouble now that we're settling into what will probably be our final team, but I appreciate all the experience that I'll be able to get. I know for a fact that there's a lot of trainers that I'm going to be fighting today. Here's the commander fights first, though. First is Commander Saturn. We actually ended up slapping his team around so bad with Bronzong that he had to retreat his Kadabra. He was outnumbered and outgunned. Didn't stand a chance. After that was Commander Mars again. Bronzong, Machoke, and Rapidash seemed to have a pretty easy time with all of these commanders at this point. Especially Bronzong, he really shuts down poison types. And now we have a long, long trek north. We have fire and fighting moves, so I'm not actually too worried about the upcoming ice gym, but man is it ever a long trip to get there. On my way, I was actually going to trade my Machoke back and forth with a friend to evolve my Machoke into a Machamp, but it turns out I can't. To do this challenge, I had to make a separate profile on my Switch so that I wouldn't override my regular Brilliant Diamond file that I started. But that means I'm not attached to a Nintendo account, and thus I can't trade online. I don't have anyone local to trade with either. I can't even just use Pokemon Home to switch it to my other account, because on that account, I haven't beaten the first gym in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond yet, and that's what unlocks online trading. Even then, I can't get Pokemon Home working on the challenge account without attaching it to a Nintendo account. So I'm not paying for online for an extra account just to trade one Pokemon in a run. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have to do the Ice Gym and hope for the best. Once we get to the battle though, we had a really easy time. Her Medicham lasted a while, but all of her ice types were just one shots. Okay, so we visited all the lakes and chased down all the Galactic Goons. Now we have to take the fight to the headquarters. I would say to guess if there will be a Cyrus fight here or not, but I'm probably the only person who hasn't played Diamond or Pearl yet, so you all know the answer. I don't know yet. I mean, I, the MDB writing this, don't know yet. VoiceOver MDB does know, because he lives in the future, or the present, for when he is saying this, or the past, for future MDB who's watching this in the premiere with you guys. VoiceOver MDB here, by the way, reading this whole bit was wildly confusing. It made sense when I wrote it, but do you have any idea how weird it feels to verbally refer to yourself as your future self? This is a weird bit. <laughs> Right, so there is a Cyrus fight. First is our Pachirisu versus his Murkrow. All he had was Nightshade, so we took him out in two Electro Balls. Second is Golbat, so I decided to go with Bronzong, knowing that we can just shut him down pretty hard. He tried to Screech, but a couple of hits of Confusion took him down. Last was Sneasel, so we just had Machoke easily one-shot it with Revenge. Cyrus really has to step his game up. Okay, with that done, we have to climb Mount Cornet to chase Cyrus. In Platinum, I always thought it was weird that you have to fight Cyrus here, then climb a mountain, and he's literally the next major boss, but with, like, a higher level team. Kinda looks like that's gonna happen in this version, too. Now, I know that Diamond and Pearl didn't have the Distortion World, and honestly, I'm super happy about that, because as cool as it might have looked, it's super slow in these challenge runs, so I'm not gonna miss it. But I don't really know what Diamond and Pearl's final battle with Cyrus looks like if there is no Distortion World. Maybe I just fight him on the top of the mountain? Honestly, that's cool enough for me. Top of a mountain is much cooler to me than Strange Other Dimension. Before we can get to Cyrus, we have this double battle alongside our rival. We had a pretty easy time, but our rival managed to get three of his Pokémon to faint. Maybe I shouldn't be worrying about how the next rival fight will go. Right after this is the big Cyrus fight. His Murkrow has somehow already evolved, and we still have Rapidash at the start of the party, so I decided to just start fighting. We did some decent damage, but went down in two hits and had to finish it off with Pachirisu and his Electric Ball. Problem is, he had a held item on and also used a full restore, so I had to paralyze him and keep using more and more hits of Electro Ball. He still went down, but we almost lost Pachirisu as well. Next is Water Onyx, though, and Electro Ball did almost nothing thanks to his berry that weakens the first super effective hit he takes. We followed up with Gold Duck and just spammed Zen Headbutt. It didn't do much, but we just had to deal some damage with someone, and we don't have much of a choice. Golduck actually would have gotten the knockout if not for Cyrus using a super potion, of all things. We were able to finish it off with Machoke, but even he took some damage first. For Crobat, I sent in Bronzong and just used a bunch of confusion. Early on, though, he used U-turn to switch to Weavile, so I had to switch to Machoke. 
We took a hit of Fling, but it barely did anything. Then we tanked an Aerial Ace and used the extra power on Revenge for a one-shot. Back out to his Crobat, and our Bronzong and Confusion got us the victory in two more hits. After the fight, Professor Rowan explains to us that we have to fight the Legendary and he doesn't really let us leave, so I just use the Master Ball and deposit it. Yeah, I'm sure its starting moves are probably really awesome, but I think the run is just more interesting if I don't use the Legendaries, you know? Now let's get biking. We have an electric gym in the next town. So this fight took tons of tries before I had a single decent run because I had to experiment with strategies a lot. It starts with Raichu, who always seems to Volt Switch to Ampapom right away, so we take some serious damage off Fake Out. But I've learned that that gives us a chance to actually set up Toxic Spikes if we start with Rosalia, so we can badly poison his team. Then we use Leech Seed and Mega Drain to try and stay healthy, but we fainted early in the process. Machoke was able to easily finish it off between the damage of Low Sweep, Poison, and Leech Seed, although he did take some damage in the process. Raichu came back out, getting badly poisoned in the process, but then he Volt Switched again to Octillery, who also got badly poisoned and took a huge hit from Revenge. I went ahead and low sweeped with Machoke, and we were actually faster, landing a knockout. Back out to Raichu yet again, so this time we switched to Rapidash. Weirdly enough, though, he has Surf, so he actually took us out really quickly. At least he took some poison damage first. I sent in Bronzong, but then Raichu just Volt Switched again, this time to his last Pokemon, Luxray. Right away he got badly poisoned from our spikes, and we started dealing damage just to get crit by Crunch to go down to only 5 health. I thought we'd faint, but then this really weird game mechanic that I'm not really that familiar with kicked in, where due to our high friendship, Bronzong just kinda survived a hit with one health when he easily should have fainted. I think this is just some new game thing? It's kinda wild. Anyway, that let us hold on so much longer that we actually got the knockout between all the poison and confusion damage. Finally, he sent his original Raichu back out and he finished us off with Volt Switch, but he couldn't actually switch to anyone. We only have Pachirisu and Golduck left, so I was a little bit worried, but Golduck was able to survive a hit and finish him off with a Water Pulse. With that done, I'm making my way through Victory Road. I feel like I haven't had a good chance to talk about what I actually think of Brilliant Diamond yet, so let's do it here. Right away, the fact that we get to play the Gen 4 games with all of the new game features and moves is pretty cool to me as a longtime Pokemon fan, since that alone changes the gameplay experience a lot, and the gameplay experience is mostly what I'm into Pokemon for, just personally. I know some people like love all the cute designs and everything, and I do like a lot of Pokemon designs, but I've just always really been into RPGs, and I just really like how Pokemon works as an RPG. It's why I'm also into other RPGs and have played tons of them on this channel over the years. Like, you ever played Final Fantasy Tactics? Like, any of them? They're all great. I think I can see what people were complaining about, though, when they said it's too much like the originals. If people were expecting this to be kind of like how Heart Gold and Soul Silver were compared to Gold and Silver, then I can understand why this would be disappointing. Honestly, I've had a pretty fun time doing this run, at least up until this point. You never know how the end of a run is gonna go. The music is great, the gameplay is fun, the challenge type is interesting, and I haven't had to do a bunch of grinding sessions since the whole party level's up. I don't want to say too early that I might want to do another run in this game because I don't know how the end of the game is gonna go yet, so we'll see. Now let's go give that last rival fight a try. First is his Star Raptor, who weirdly enough sets up Sunny Day while we paralyze him with Nuzzle. I went for Electro Ball, then he suddenly switched to Torterra. Maybe he's doing a Solar Beam thing. We switched for Bronzong, mostly just because he could take a hit, and use Confuse Ray, and we don't care much if he faints. <laughs> we actually did get to land a few extra hits because of the extra time from Confusion, but he's healing with leftovers and we don't deal much damage in the first place, so not much happened before we fainted. Next I had Rapidash go in and use Flame Charge. We probably could have just gotten one shot by Earthquake, but he had used Stealth Rock for some reason, and then Roar. It was really weird. Well, that forced Pachirisu out, so I switched right to Machoke instead. He takes an Earthquake and nearly fainted us, but at least our low sweep got us the knockout. Back out to his Star Raptor, so we met it with Pachirisu and finally hit that Electro Ball that we were trying from the start, just for him to U-turn right into his Snorlax. Okay, so I went ahead and hit Nuzzle to paralyze him, then got taken out by high horsepower. I sent in Roserade to follow up with Leech Seed, knowing that it'll heal us by a lot. 
He hit yawn, so I set up some toxic seeds before falling asleep. We actually held on hilariously well during our little nap thanks to leech seed, so we finished laying down our toxic spikes when we woke up and kept landing mega drain to stay healthy. See, we're holding a big root, so we actually heal extra off leech seed and mega drain, and if you use toxic spikes twice, then it like badly poisons people, like the move toxic. Badly poisons people. Badly poisons Pokemon. I worded that so badly. <laughs> That's when he did something weird and actually switched from Snorlax to Rapidash. You don't see them switch that often, like, for seemingly no reason. Well, Rapidash got hurt and poisoned, then we just switched to Golduck to tank fire moves and mess him up with Water Pulse. He went down fast and once again sent out Star Raptor, so this time I sent in Rapidash. We lost attack to Intimidate, but Flame Charge still hits reasonably hard, and thanks to Paralysis, we didn't get hurt before taking him down. Next is Snorlax, so I sent Roseraid back in to easily finish him off, but not before he hit Yawn again, so he fell asleep as Floatzel came out. I stayed in and tried for Mega Drain as he was using Ice Fang. I was hoping we'd wake up in time, but we just didn't, so he took us out. At least he took some turns of bad poison damage. We have almost no choices left, so I sent in our damaged Golduck just to land some Zen Headbutts. It did some decent damage and poison nearly finished Floatzel off. Knowing he didn't have any full restores left, we just took the final hit and let him faint from his poison. Last was his hair cross, and I really wasn't sure I could win anymore, but Rapidash was able to do a lot more damage from Fire Charge than I expected, and we managed to survive his attack with only one health. There was no friendship bonus on that one, we just lucked out, and it got us the win on a pretty brutal rival fight. That took a lot more than one try. <laughs> with that done, let's look at our team. I'm skeptical that we're going to be strong enough to beat Cynthia, but honestly, I think that this is mostly going to go pretty well. I'm thinking the first three Elite Four members will go smoothly, we might have an issue on the Psychic one, and then we'll have to grind before Cynthia. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Bug Trainer Aaron. I had to experiment with who to send out against Dustox a lot, since he likes to use Toxic, so Bronzong ended up being my go-to. Dustox actually heals every turn with Black Sludge, and we can't deal tons of damage, but at least we don't take much damage from his moves. The strategy is just Confusion and Confuse Ray. It took a few tries, but eventually we got this run where it goes pretty smoothly. Second is Heracross, so I sent in Rapidash just to get outsped and one-shot by Earthquake. Okay, well Rapidash was my answer to half his team, so this isn't good. Golduck was able to take him down with a few Zen headbutts. But then his third choice is Beauty Fly, and it just wrecked us. We threw our whole team at him, and he just kept healing and fighting until we lost. Well, that wasn't even close. I really thought that would go better. I didn't think that so much of his team could hit so hard. I didn't see Earthquake coming at all, and Beauty Fly was surprisingly difficult. It sucks that I can't even fight against the Elite Four themselves, since the fight itself was so hard. But at least the group leveling means that we can use whatever Pokemon is best against the local wild Pokemon, and everyone will get some decent experience from it. I'm gonna have to come up with a new strategy while I grind, though. Okay, Aaron again. This time Dustox took a lot longer to deal with than usual thanks to his light screen and him spamming Moonlight to heal, but after literally three straight minutes, he went down. This time we used Gold Duck for Heracross and took him out in a couple of Zen headbutts, although we lost almost all of our health in the process. As Beauty Fly came out, we still had Rapidash to use, and it worked amazingly well being able to easily take down both Beauty Fly and the Vespaquen right after. Last was Drapion, but one hit from Machoke's Revenge was able to one-shot him. Second is Ground Trainer Bertha. Quagsire was a one-shot from Roserade, then Whiskash hung on from one-shot to fully heal, and then feint in one-shot on the follow-up. Sudowoodo was a one-shot with Magical Leaf, and Golem only held on thanks to an ability. She did outspeed us and two-shot us though, but Golduck was able to easily finish it. Last was Hippodon, who actually managed to tank Water Pulse pretty well. Two of them almost took him out, but his Earthquake was too strong for Golduck. All it took was one low sweep from Machoke to finish it off, though. Easy win for once. Third is Fire Trainer Flint. This one took a lot of tries. His Rapidash is first, so naturally we fight it with Golduck. We took some poison jabs, but thankfully never got poisoned, so our health was still about half when we took him down. Out to Roserade for Steelix, and we hit pretty hard right away, but got one shot by Iron Tail in return. Golduck finished it with Water Pulse right after. Lopunny is next, so I sent him a choke back in to take a hit, and then one-shot it with Revenge. Now is when it gets scary, Driftbloom. 
This took me tons of tries, because Driftblum loves to use Minimize, then Baton Pass. On this attempt, we got burned right away, but then hit Knockoff to do some decent damage. Weirdly enough, he Baton Passed without even using Minimize, so as Infernape came in, he didn't have any buffs. We used the power of friendship to magically heal our burn, but we just went down to close combat, so we had to send in Golduck anyway. He almost fainted, but he did manage to take Infernape down. Last is Driftbloom, and I can already tell that you know this was a long fight by the speed of the footage. <laughs> Knowing he couldn't switch to anyone else, I just sent in Bronzong to use Confuse Ray and Payback. He started using Minimize and Full Restores right away, so I knew this could be a long one, and indeed it was, because the entire rest of the fight took 11 minutes. For context, usually in a full team run like this, if I'm 4 minutes into an Elite Four fight, I already have a good idea on if I'm gonna win or not. Well in this fight, it took 3 minutes to get his whole team but Driftblum to faint, and then 11 minutes just on Driftblum. We just had to keep throwing our whole team at him, blowing through insane amounts of power points trying to land a hit, before we eventually scored the knockout. That was awful. <laughs> Fourth is Psychic Trainer Lucian. Right away things start rough with his Mr. Mime using Reflect and Light Screen, so our Rapidash is quickly not doing much damage. The game claims we crit from Friendship, but honestly that damage output didn't look like a crit to me. Pretty quickly we were brought to super low health, but yet again we hung on from death blows thanks to the power of Friendship, letting us get a knockout, weirdly enough. Medicham is next, so I sent in Machoke since I often make them faint in one hit in Victory Road. Naturally, this one is much stronger and instantly took us to one health off Zen Headbutt, then our revenge did almost nothing. Knockoff did decent damage, but we went down and then Light Screen finally faded. If Reflect wasn't still up, I bet you we could have gotten a win there. Anyway, Brunzong continued the fight, but for some reason he just switched to Alakazam instead of finishing us off, so Alakazam had to do it. Pachirisu was able to paralyze him before going down, and then I sent in Roserade to leech seed him. Then they switched into Girafferig while I was setting up Toxic Spikes. I didn't really know why until I tried Mega Drain, and it turns out Girafferig heals from grass moves. So he set up a light screen, and we had to switch out to Golduck. I'll give you a little spoiler alert, though. His Girafferig is a beast, and we could hardly do anything to him. Light screen totally shut us down at that point. Okay, so it's back to grinding. Honestly, I have no real answer to Mr. Mime. We need Steel, Ghost, or Poison, and we don't have any of those. It's a bit late to go catch something to deal with it now, so all I can do is get stronger and keep changing my strategy. I'm hoping that if I can at least get past Mr. Mime quickly, then the lack of light screen and reflect on the rest of the team will make it a lot easier. I'm really just thankful that I have an extra work week to work on this one, because this has really been slowing down. Another billion tries at Lucian. This time, the Rapidash and Mr. Mime fight goes debatably better, as he doesn't set up a light screen, and we wasted enough of his time that his Reflected didn't carry on to the rest of his team for very long. The moment Medicham came out, he hit a Zen headbutt, we once again hang on from Friendship, and then Reflect faded, letting our knockoff do way more damage. We still fainted, of course, but once Rapidash came in and Medicham used his full restore, we were able to hit a few good flame charges. That's when something hilarious happened. He went for high jump kick, it missed through the power of friendship, and he knocked himself out. <laughs> Man, this friendship thing is really strong. Anyway, Bronzong did a great job of one-shotting Alakazam, and next was the ever-terrifying Giraffe Rig. This time I actually have Pokemon with dark moves that haven't fainted though, so Bronzong took him out. Last was his own Bronzong, so I started by having Rapidash hit it hard, although we fainted since we had almost no health left. I sent in Roserade to follow up and we did some passable damage before we fainted. I'm just happy that we got Leech Seed in because that sealed his fate. Golduck was able to easily finish it off between the damage from Leech Seed and some Water Pulses. Finally, the Pokemon Champion, Cynthia, and she starts with Spiritomb. I had Golduck start using Water Pulse and we got super lucky with it causing confusion, but it was doing a lot less damage than I expected. She ended up withdrawing it pretty early though, switching for Gastrodon. I went for Water Pulse just to find out that he absorbs water, so we took a hit from Rock Tomb. Right away I switched into Roserade, tanked to Rock Tomb, then hit Mega Drain nearly for a one-shot. 
She just kept using Rock Tomb for some reason though, so we easily finished it with Magic Leaf after her Rock Tombs. I switched out to Rapidash as her Spear Tomb came back out. We hit for some decent damage, she used Dark Pulse, then she suddenly switched out again, this time to Melodic. Okay, well we switched to Roserade again, taking a weak Scald in the process. Our Mega Drain did a decent chunk of damage, enough that we survived her follow-up Ice Beam. Another Mega Drain brought her into red health and let us survive yet another Ice Beam. I thought she was going to use Full Restore, but she didn't, so our next Mega Drain got the knockout. Next, we sent out Rapid Ash for Spear Tomb yet again and still didn't manage to finish it off. We took a huge hit, then finally made it faint on the next round. Next is her own Roserade, and I was pretty worried about Rapid Ash due to our low health, but our Flame Charge did great damage. We still faint due to Sludge Bomb, though. Bronzong was able to finish it, but not before losing half his health to Shadow Ball. Second from last, she sent out Lucario. I went for revenge on Machoke, but he just used Nasty Plot, so we got a one-shot. Last was Garchomp, and this thing is a beast. Right away, she used Swords Dance to power up. We nailed in Low Sweep to lower her speed. Then we hung on from a one-shot Earthquake thanks to the power of Friendship, letting us get a second Low Sweep in. It lowered her speed more, but also made us faint from Rough Skin. I sent in Pachirisu next to try and confuse her, hoping that her Swords Dance would make her confusion damage enough that she'd faint herself. Pachirisu just went down quickly, though. As Rose Raid came out, I thought we were about to win with Magical Leaf, just for her to hang on with a sliver in full heal. I had Golduck go in and kept trying to deal damage, but we just got one shot by Earthquake. Last was our wounded Bronzong and my heart was racing so hard I accidentally chose Confuse Ray, forgetting that she was already confused off Water Pulse. She hits herself, I try going for Confusion, she snaps out of it and takes us down. Do you think I'd have gotten the knockout if I used Confusion? I'm skeptical. Maybe if it was a crit? I bet I'd have won if it was a crit. 14 tries later and we got this run. Every failed try takes like 10 minutes, by the way. After tons of experimenting, I found that Pachirisu is the best thing to start with here because I can hit Nuzzle and then use Sweet Kiss as they're always going to switch into Gastrodon, so I just switch to Roserade to quickly take it down. For round 2 with Spiritomb, I fight it with Gold Duck until it switches like always, this time to Roserade. So we go ahead and we switch to Rapidash, tank a hit, then finish it with Flame Charge. Out to Melodic so we send in Roserade and just Mega Drain a bunch until it faints with just below half of our health left. Spear Tomb comes back out, like always, but this time I finished it off with two Magic Leaves, only hanging on thanks to Spear Tomb being fully paralyzed, mind you. Now Lucario is next, and it's not always a one-shot with Machoke as I've learned the hard way many times, but this time it was, so we stand a chance. Once again, Garchomp used Sword Stance. We used Low Sweep, but this time we got one shot by Earthquake. No friendship save. Pachirisu got destroyed like she was nothing, but we did confuse her first. So Rose Raid actually nearly took her down with the opportunity. In fact, the Magic Leaves were doing about as much damage as Low Sweep, if not more. But it wasn't long before she just used Earthquake, so we went down. The rest of our team were one shots. We do have to grind. The grinding by this point has gotten pretty brutal. I tried training in the underground, but honestly, it took so much longer between fights, and the Pokémon only scaled to level 50 anyway, so they weren't even giving me more experience than I would have found in Victory Road. I thought that having group experience would speed up the run a lot more than this, but grinding a full team still takes ages at this point in the game. Not to mention that our moves are way, way worse than Cynthia's. People on Twitter have been telling me that Cynthia's team all have perfect IVs and they have competitive effort values, as well as they're all decked out with amazing items. You know, the kind of stuff I really wish I knew before I started the run. Turns out that her Pokémon don't just have better moves than mine, they're also much stronger than mine. I didn't realize I was going into this with this much of a disadvantage. I kinda thought this might be a fast run. The grinding in the later stages of this run have gotten so bad that I will literally just take my Switch around the house with me while I walk. You know, just to stay active. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of driving me insane that I can't get any separation from the game right now. But if I'm not working pretty much non-stop, video's gonna be late. That's in spite of me starting this just about a whole week early. 
Do you see why I don't really do challenges in the new games very often? They make for fun videos, but it's unbelievably hard to make enough time to actually do these. I haven't been able to work on literally any other video for a week now. I picked up a held item to boost water damage for Golduck, a psychic damage one for Bronzong, a grass one for Roserade, although the big root still might be more useful, jury's out on that, and I grinded lots. Let's just hope that our next try at Cynthia goes much better. Okay, back at Cynthia, many attempts have been attempted. Once again, Spiritomb just got paralyzed and switched to Gastiodon, who we one-shot with Roserade. As Spiritomb came back out, we actually almost took it out with Pachirisu this time, but we actually lost in the process, having to finish her off with Roserade's Magic Leaf again. Against Melodic, we ended up with a lot less health than before, but Magic Leaf did great job taking her down quickly, and next was our Rapidash, nearly one-shotting her Rose Raid, taking huge damage off Sludge Bomb, then getting the knockout after she used up a couple of full restores. Hey, I'm just happy that she decided to use them before her Garchomp. Lucario was a one-shot with low sweep, and it's out to Garchomp. Just like the very first attempt we had at this fight, we managed to get a second low sweep in after hanging on thanks to Friendship. Thanks to getting two low sweeps in, her speed was just low enough to give us the speed advantage with our one health Roserade so that we could hit Magic Leaf for a much earned victory. Man, what do I even say about that run? On one hand, the end of the run was really brutally difficult and slow, so there was a lot of frustration. But at the same time, there was loads of interesting battles, probably in a larger quantity than any other run I've done? Playing the run was brutal at times, but I'm sure the video is going to turn out well. I don't think I'm going to be able to do runs in this game very often though, since it's basically a miracle this video wasn't late. This was a huge project. I really hope you guys like that run though. I'm not sure what my next run is going to be yet since I have so much stuff to plan out right now, but it's going to be in two weeks on February 19th, so mark those calendars. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments in the challenge request section of my Discord channel and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. All right, off script now. Oh man, so I checked. This is the longest Pokemon challenge script I've ever written. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, just a hair under 10,000 words. It was like 40 words short. So considering all the dumb ad-libbing I end up doing during these voiceovers, it's got to be well over 10,000 words. The previous longest one was this year's Christmas run I did, which was in Pokemon Black 2. Uh, that one was my previous longest video, in terms of the Pokemon challenges at least, and that one was just over 8,000 words. So this one is 20% longer on the words, at least, if not slightly more. We'll see what it comes out to. Will the video be 20% longer? I don't know, I'm voiceover MDB. <laughs> I won't know till I'm editing, I guess, and I mean, you can all see the answer in the runtime of the video. I want to give a massive thank you to researcher Leela, as always, for helping me a ton with the research for this. The research for this video was pretty much just us surfing around on the wiki trying to find Pokemon that start with good moves, as it always is, and then smushing our teams together and trying to come up with something good. Um, it ended up being really, really brutal at the end. Neither of us knew just how bad Cynthia's team would be. Because, you know, I, I don't have time to research every little aspect of the game when I could just get playing it and learn that way, you know? So I just kind of tried to research, where can I catch something that might be useful? Unfortunately, neither of us had beaten the game, like, casually yet, so we didn't know just how bad Cynthia was going to be. There was a lot of frustration there, that sucked. But you know what, overall, I think that this video is probably going to turn out awesome. And so it's probably, in the long run, just going to be good memories. And that's, that's always nice. Can I just say again, by the way, thank you to Chimera for these sponsorships. Legit, no way on earth I'd be able to afford to do these kinds of really long challenge runs without the sponsorship. Because I can't just take that much time off doing other runs, you know? Like, if I do a quantity of runs, that's money that I can then use to support my family and, you know, try to get a mortgage and stuff. Getting all that extra money from the sponsorship, though, lets me get less money from ad views. It lets me do these things that gets you better videos, but I 
know will get me paid less because it's less views overall because it's less videos. And so I get to finally make all these longer runs that you guys always ask for. This makes it financially viable, which is why I'm so happy that you guys took so well to the Chimera sponsorships. Legit, been doing them for like weeks and weeks and weeks now, and I haven't seen a single complaint. You, someone always complains about uh, anything, right? <laughs> I'm sure everything I've ever done, somebody has complained about. I don't know, I haven't seen it. I've read so many comments and it just seems like everybody's happy with it and I'm happy with it. And it brings some stability, which is really nice. Uh, so I'm just really thankful for that. I'm sorry that at least at the time that I'm doing this voiceover, so like uh, February 22nd, 2022, um, the whole previous week and probably this whole week, um, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to have any time for any streams, and I feel bad about that because I was really good about streaming a lot for a few weeks before that, but it's just because I thought I was gonna have a little bit more free time than I did, and then this challenge ended up being harder than I thought it was, and so I had less time than I thought, and everything got bunched up, and you know how it is. I'm sure you've heard a million YouTubers talk about the kinds of scheduling struggles that go into independent video production. You never know when something's gonna go wrong or something takes longer than expected. They're called challenges for a reason, right? Because they're challenging. Um, but I've just been quite busy. I do want to get back to the Let's Play stuff really soon because I have so much fun with that and the streams are so fun and being able to just do them at my own pace without a set schedule has been really helping me find tons of fun in doing the Let's Plays which is great because I never want to stop having, stop having fun doing those. They're so important to me. I love those videos. Anyway, uh, I have tons to do. I got to edit this monstrous voiceover that I just recorded. That's well over an hour long, and I bet you half of it is flubs I got to cut out. So I'm going to go get started on that. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.